heard speed rolling in a long time. System. So we're working to address the effects of that as well. The officials with the EPA are assisting us. They're providing suggestions, they're providing recommendations, so we'll be able to ensure the safety of the water in the city. Now right now, they say the water coming to the city from Detroit does meet the current water standards, but we have concerns. The concerns are that as warmer <coughs> weather settles in, there may be more problems as it relates to the chlorine decay. Now, while the population in Flint has decreased drastically over the years, the size of the city's water system is what remains the same. And because of this, water isn't moving through the system like it needs to, and that was why we had the Flush for Flint program last week. But uh, while we did the flush, we know that flushing can only do so much. It still doesn't solve the issue. Now, the EPA, has made recommendations to Flint on how we can address the concerns related to the chlorine levels. And I'm glad that the EPA is here involved in helping us to work to recover from the water crisis. And we are working with the state to rectify those issues, but we also, I'm gonna say that again, we also want to do what's best for the people of Flint. And we don't wanna to move too quickly because we could make things worse and we don't want that to happen either. Now, I'm not a water expert by any means, so what I'm going to do is actually have Jolisa McDay, our interim utility administrator, come up now to tell you about some of the things we're addressing uh, to fix this issue. Jolisa. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good morning. First, to be clear, the June 10th date is indeed a target date. It is not a mandated date. It is not a requirement. The City of Flint Department of Utilities has been proactive in responding to the request made by the EPA. To that extent, we are installing and procuring the necessary equipment in order to provide chlorine and sodium hydroxide to the water that we're receiving for GL. The need to feed additional chlorine is in part because we want to be sure that we're maintaining adequate chlorine residuals throughout our distribution system. The EPA is requiring us to boost the pH in order to support the reaction that happens in distribution for the coating of the lead pipes and service lines. We are working collaboratively with MDEQ and the EPA, and I am more than grateful for the technical support and assistance that we've received thus far. But to be clear, we want to take an incremental approach. We want to do what is in the best interest of the residents of this community, and we do not want to be an experiment by feeding additional levels of chemicals that have not been explored in our system. If you will recall, last year at this time, we had elevated levels of chlorine in our drinking water, and it was not to our benefit. That is not a mistake that we want to have happen again. We are requesting the support of the EPA and the MDEQ in devising a plan of action so that we can dose these chemicals in the best possible manner to protect public health and our infrastructure, and to do it in a responsible way. 
not in a way that is done quickly and without any thought, not in a way that will be careless and not considerate of our residents. Again, it is the goal of the City of Flint and the Department of Utilities to take a strategic approach to improving water quality. Within the letter, it indicates that EPA had been in contact with the Utilities Administrator since January. Please be mindful that this Interim Utilities Administrator has been talking with EPA only since mid-April, and at that time, it was devised from the Utilities Administrator that these particular chemicals, being bleach, also recognized as sodium hypochlorite, and caustic soda, being sodium hydroxide, are possible chemical additives that could be added to the water to better improve the water quality. Before we even want to take the approach of adding these chemicals, recognizing that the chemical feed systems are indeed important if needed, what we are proactively doing is lowering our reservoir levels at our owl stations. This is going to help us to turn the water over. We do understand that water age is a detriment to our processes. When water sits in lines because water is not being used, that water becomes old, the oxygen in the water begins to deplete, the water is not as fresh and it's not as pleasing in it as it should be to our customers. The chlorine residual drops, and along with that drop, the pH drops as well. Be mindful that the addition of these chemicals has the potential of sitting in the system in areas where water is not being used. That means that we then boost up pH and chlorine residuals in the distribution system to accommodate an area that is not in use. But at the same time, for areas of distribution, that are performing well because customers are using the water or because our infrastructure is so designed that that water is actually moving, we do not want to add these chemicals and possibly impede the progress that we have made to date. Again, the City of Flint Department of Utilities is requesting assistance from MDEQ and EPA in establishing a plan of action which will take an incremental approach to applying these chemicals in a responsible manner to our distribution system and the waters that we receive from GLWA. Again, I am thankful, more than thankful, for the technical expertise and assistance that the City of Flint has been provided by these agencies. Just today, I was notified that the permit has been uh, approved for us to continue with our more temporary system. This Friday, what you are expecting to have in place, and again, I do say expecting because we have been provided with a target date, is a temporary system to indeed another temporary system. And that system will not be put online without due diligence in being able to appropriately feed and responsibly feed these chemicals that can impact our public. So with that, I thank you for your time. Can I ask one question about the, you know, the reservoir level? How does that help keep the water moving the system better? When reservoirs are allowed to sit without that water moving to and fro, what happens is that you get levels or stratification within that reservoir. That means that water quality can change between different levels in that structure. When that water then moves out, what you can see are changes in that water quality. By us turning the water over, lowering those levels, we then freshen the water or we allow that water to move so that it becomes more representative of what's actually coming into our distribution system. This is further supported by the hydro flushers, but hydro flushers only use a very small amount of water. So you have to keep doing this. It's not something you can just do once and it's going to be moving through. It's something you've got to keep doing. Actually, this is a best practice. Turning over water in distribution systems by modifying reservoir levels is a well-known best practice. 
and it's something that we're actually being more proactive on as part of our optimization strategy. So we'll continue to do it. Yes. So just to be clear, uh, this this date that they they gave you the uh, the target date of June tenth that that won't necessarily happen because you guys want to to make sure that you don't rush into anything as far as putting chemicals into the system. Remember, we're talking about two separate things, if you will. One being the establishment or the installation of the system. The second being the operation of the system. The goal is to have the installation of the system complete by the target date. The operation of the system requires the technical support and expertise of EPA and DEQ. So what's a realistic time frame if we're starting to feed the chemicals in a responsible manner? That will depend on how quickly we get the technical assistance from EPA and DEQ. Once we have a plan of action, we will be more inclined to dose those chemicals again in a responsible manner, considering our public. Is there a you, made a, you made a statement that you didn't want to rush this. What is your deepest fear as it relates to all of this? For someone who's hearing this for the first time and not knowing the science of it, but wondering whether or not there's something to be concerned about, what is your deepest fear? The greatest concern is that we will undo the progress that we've made thus far. So in establishing the layer, the protective coating within our lines, if for those areas that are already performing well, if we then go ahead and we boost the pH and we boost the chlorine in those areas of the distribution system, the possibility exists that what has been regarded to as this chloride to sulfate ratio may then become a little bit more out of alignment. If that happens, the possibility exists for that layer to start to break down. And we do not want a repeat of what happened last year. We're moving forward. We're not trying to revisit the past. Um, Ms. McDade, quick question about last year. What were we doing last year to properly chlorinate the water or to try to properly coordinate? I wasn't here last year, and I won't speak to all of the actions that were taken. I know there's been a lot of investigation that has gone on with regards to those particulars. I'm not going to speak on that. I don't have all the information. It would be improper for me to, to say anything about that. Paul Herring, Spectacle Productions. Uh, what is the cost related to lowering the level of the reservoirs? And is this something we've done in the past, and are we going to keep doing it? Lowering the levels of the reservoirs is actually cost effective. Um, if we're turning over the water in the reservoirs and we can trust our customers to use more water, we may be able to even mitigate the use of so much more chemical that the EPA is requesting us to use. Again, what we don't want is pockets of chemicals or pockets of water with additional chemicals sitting in our distribution system. So the chemicals themselves, those costs will be made available at a later date if need be. We, the entire system, the initial projection, uh, just preliminarily, is $100,000. And that's just a low end number. But, but that's for everything, not just, not just lowering no, the reservoirs. No, that, that is not everything. Okay. What that is, does not include everything. What is that specifically for then? It is uh, in Sorry. part for the, the chemical feed pumps. It does not include all chemical costs. Um, Thank you. Is the concern that the addition of the new or additional chemicals then could cause more flaking within the lines? Of that is a concern. Okay. Mayor uh, Weaver, with regards to the CPA letter, when you read it, um, did it upset you? Did you feel kind of like they're trying to step on your toes a little bit too much here? And I guess what was your first thought after reading that letter? My first thought was I'm going to talk with Jolie. And then uh, we looked at it. Like I said, we're really glad that the EPA is here. We're glad they're giving some suggestions and recommendations. We're working with them just like we want to have the state involved. But we're still going to do our due diligence and make sure we don't rush. So I wanted to have a conversation with our water person, uh, who our expert is, and see what she had to say about that to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to do. Uh, sometimes you have to slow things down to do the right thing. And that's what we want to make sure. We don't do anything to go backwards with this issue. So I was okay. 
Now, we in regards to the backstop program, where is your patience right now? Because a lot of people in the city would like to see more lead service lines dug up. And then you have the recent report in Detroit that says that the cost is going to escalate far beyond what most have projected. Okay, well, you know, I can't help what they said in Detroit. But the one thing is we're, we've all been impatient with this. We've all been waiting. We're into year three. And so people are frustrated and angry and ready for things to happen rightfully. So I understand that. Uh, but we're, we've put the RFPs out, we're going to move forward. And one of the things that is good, and we touched on this in the last press conference, but maybe not enough, was we are partnering with consumers. So when they have to do some, some digging to put new gas lines in, that helps lower the, the cost for us. So we'll be able to uh, spread the money a little bit further than what we originally anticipated. Mayor Weaver, Thank you. Oh, oh.